Welcome to the Widowed Mom Podcast, episode 282, The Pressure to Be Productive. Welcome to the Widowed Mom Podcast, the only podcast that offers a proven process to help you work through your grief, to grow, evolve, and create a future you can truly look forward to. Here's your host, Master Certified Life Coach, Grief Expert, Widow, and Mom, Krista St. Germain. Hey there, welcome to another episode of the podcast. <sighs> How you doing? What's going on in your world? We've made it to late October already. Fall is in full effect, which I love. It's my favorite. I'm also loving watching my youngest, who's 17, so not so young anymore, but I'm having a lot of fun this fall watching him in theater. He doesn't really want to be on the front stage. He likes to be on the backstage, but he's in charge of the lighting crew for the upcoming Little Shop of Horrors production. And he's been doing a lot of set work and just having fun in his element and with his friends and doing things that are challenging to him, but also really enjoyable to him. It's been fun to watch. And because the holidays are coming like a freight train. <laughs> I want to make sure you know about the Happier Holidays event that we've got planned again this year for you. Holidays can be such a mixed time, right? Especially when you're a widow. There's things you look forward to. There's things you dread. It can feel overwhelming. And so I want to, again, support you with the Happier Holidays event. So you can go to coachingwithkrista.com forward slash free holiday event and register for it. And if you've done it in the past, I've done it for a few years now, and every other time I have had a free portion and then an upgraded VIP portion. And I decided not to do the upgraded VIP portion. I'm just going to give everybody everything this year. Feels better to me. I don't really want to mess with small charges. <laughs> I really just don't. I just want you to come and get help. I want the holidays to be easier for you. They can be. With the right tools, they can be. And so this event is going to be super powerful, short, easy to do, and you can go sign up for it. Coachingwithkrista.com forward slash free holiday event. I want to help make your holidays easier. So go sign up. Okay. Let's talk about the pressure to be productive and how we can navigate that as a part of widowhood. It's a pressure that most of us feel, don't we? this pressure to be productive. And yet sometimes we don't know how to get out of it. We don't know what to do about it. In fact, I don't even think very often we even consider that it's optional. We just assume our only option is to figure out how to be more productive. And so what I want to do in this episode is talk about, first of all, where this pressure even comes from. And I want to offer some ways to think about it differently so that we can create a different experience. Because I think for women especially, and in grief especially, productivity and that pressure that we are experiencing, is, it's not helping. It's making it harder. And this is a time when we need things to be less hard. And so productivity and productivity culture is a good place to look. So we're going to talk about the history of it and how it might be showing up for you in grief. And then what you can actually do about it and some questions that you can ask yourself about it. All right. So first the history of it. Where did it even come from? When did we decide that productivity mattered and mattered so much that it defined us? So if we look back to the industrial revolution, there was a pretty significant shift in society, right? Because before the industrial revolution, life was based on ag domestic work right? Things, things were guided by the seasons. Things were guided by family needs. And so productivity before the industrial revolution was a lot different. It was a lot more fluid. But then the industrial revolution introduced this idea that we needed to be efficient and we needed to produce, right? Factories needed output, Goods produced at faster rates made more money, and workers began to get rewarded based on how much they could produce and how quickly they could do it. 
And this was really a new way of thinking about success, of measuring success, productivity. And instead of just valuing people for relationships or character or creativity, we started really putting this emphasis on being productive and output and how much could you get done in a day. And production equals value. And while it started in the factories, it didn't just stay there, right? It, it trickled into all the other aspects of life, our home lives, our education. And now even today, we even do this to ourselves when it comes to personal growth. It's so ingrained that it's hard to see this mindset of cultural productivity, right? Productivity equals value. And we can see it in that we are praised when we work long hours, when we are busy, when we produce what we might equate to perfection, right? This drive to do more, this drive to be more. Those are all evidence of this productivity culture that we have just adopted as normal. We're supposed to be productive. We're not productive. Something's wrong. We need to be productive. And we don't even think about it. Think about how many things you're sold to make you more productive, right? Planners, apps, entire coaching programs, all about getting more done in less time, about time management. It's all reinforcing a narrative that says if we aren't productive, productive, <laughs> productive, we aren't valuable. It's nonsense. It's nonsense. And it's showing up in grief. And it's showing up especially for women, right? With women, we've internalized this idea that we need to be a superwoman, that we need to do all the things. We need to be good at work. We need to manage the house. We need to be available to our family and available to our friends. And we need to be an amazing mom. And we need to do all the things for our kids' schools right? Or if our kids are grown, we need to do all the things that, that grandmothers do. Got to do it all. And it's exhausting. And beyond exhausting, I'm going to argue that in grief, it can be actually harmful. It can be harmful. So many of the coaching requests that I receive are based on the idea that productivity equals value. So much of the frustration that we experience based on where we are in grief relative to where we think we're supposed to be in grief is based on the foundation that productivity is important. And then when you think about it in terms of spousal loss, now we're going from what used to be the work of two to trying to do it all ourselves we might have humans that are depending on us to be their only parent, right? We're trying to do so much more in less and everything's a hot mess. Grief is such a physical experience, right? So we might not be sleeping as well as we're used to. Our hormones might be out, out of whack. Like we aren't, we aren't at full capacity and yet we demand more of ourselves than we demanded before. Not helpful, not helpful. And I know for me, I had also kind of this proving energy in grief where it was kind of like, okay, world, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what I can get done. I was trying to prove it to myself too, right? I was trying to prove it to myself that, you know, grief wasn't going to ruin my life. I can still handle all these things. So then asking for even less support because I wanted to prove it having an even longer to-do list and measuring my value based on how on top of things I was, how much I got done. Are you doing this to yourself? Are you doing this to yourself? If you are, like, listen, you're not alone. And also we can stop doing this. We can stop doing this to ourselves. So first I want to bring us back to the dual process model. I think it's a good time to talk about it. If you remember the dual process model, and I've mentioned it in other podcasts, I did a whole podcast 
episode on it by itself, but the dual process model teaches that we can divide all of the actions that we take into two buckets. One is grief related, one is restoration. So grief related is everything related to the loss, the logistics of the loss, feeling feelings about the loss, right? All the things related to processing the loss. It's a long list. Then the other bucket of activity is anything that doesn't have to do with the loss. And I recognize that that's a tall order because when it's your spouse, it doesn't feel like there's much that doesn't have to do with the loss. It feels like everything's affected. But what I'm talking about is taking a break from thinking about it, having fun with friends, getting out into nature, enjoying hobbies, laughing, Netflix binges, things that take your mind off of what has happened. That's restoration. And dual process model says the value is in going back and forth between dealing with the loss and taking a break from the loss. Now, if we didn't know about this model and all we had been buying into was the productivity mindset, that narrative, then guess what we want to do all the time? We want to think about it all the time. We need to deal with it all the time, right? And that's too much. We can't. Not a good idea. Not healthy. But if that's the mindset that we're coming from, then when we actually do spend time in the restorative bucket, guess what happens? We judge ourselves. We tell ourselves that we're doing it wrong. No, no, no. Back and forth, back and forth. Think about it, deal with it, take a break. And when you zoom out, you'll see that the back and forth between thinking about it and dealing with it and taking a break from it is healthy. It actually is productive. Not that I think productivity should be the goal, right? But too much of any, anything in this regard is not helpful. It's not helpful. So we want to go back and forth and back and forth. I want to offer to you that you consider that rest is valuable, productive. Give yourself permission to do things that are not related to the loss. Not all progress looks like action. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is nothing. Sometimes the most productive thing you can do is let yourself feel something or let yourself cry. And it's harder to do that if you've been telling yourself that your worth is in what you accomplish. I promise you it's not. Your worth is fully established. It is not touchable. It has nothing to do with what you get done or don't. Success has nothing to do with how many things you check off the list. And I want to give you permission to redefine how you measure success. What if success, if your idea of success, is giving yourself permission to be still? What if your idea of success is giving yourself permission to just be in the messiness of grief without needing to fix it? What if you decide that that's progress? I think it is. I think it is, especially when sometimes staying busy feels like the only way to be not overwhelmed with grief, right? It's like there's this part of us that just keeps saying, well, if I just keep moving, you know, I won't have to feel it. If I just keep moving, it won't catch up with me. And that's totally understandable and absolutely valid protective mechanism, trying to help you avoid feeling what might to you seem completely unbearable. And you also might have a knowing <laughs> that you don't want to do that forever. That at some point, you actually do want to learn how to feel whatever's going on so that it doesn't feel so heavy anymore. It's complicated, isn't it? When we push ourselves to be constantly productive because we've been told that that's what makes us valuable, it has real physical tolls. I want you to think about this experience as a widow, as a marathon. If you're trying to run it as a sprint, we're in trouble, aren't we? Because we're going to burn out. We're going to be emotionally depleted and physically de depleted and mentally depleted. 
And that's on top of an already exhausting experience, right? Grief is, is exhausting by itself, even when we aren't pushing ourselves to be constantly productive. So when we have an already exhausting experience and we push ourselves to be constantly productive, we're just amplifying the exhaustion, right? We're making it worse. We're not leaving any room for anything else. We don't have to do that to ourselves. So I want you to ask yourself a couple of questions and just see what comes up. Get curious about your relationship with productivity. What have you been telling yourself about productivity? So here's the questions. You ready? Number one, what story am I telling myself about my worth if I'm not productive? Another way to ask this is, if I stop being productive, what's the bad thing or things I'm telling myself will happen? What I want to promise you is that the call is largely coming from inside the house here, right? If you stop being quote unquote productive, if you get less things done, usually what happens, the downside of that is that we're mean to ourselves in the way that we talk to ourselves, right? Our internal narrative becomes mean, which makes sense if there's a part of us that believes that in order to be okay, accepted, loved, valuable, we have to be productive. Makes sense that we learned that somewhere. Just because we learned something somewhere doesn't mean we have to keep <laughs> beating ourselves up with it. We don't. Question number two, am I being productive to avoid feeling something painful? Not that that's right or wrong, by the way. It's not. It's just good to know. And if the answer is yes, and also you, you don't want to be afraid, then you can consider giving yourself permission to learn a new way of dealing with feelings. This is one of the things I love helping people with. And one of the things I find so frustrating because most of us aren't taught skills around feelings. And so at the time when we need the most, we don't have them. And we have to default to the coping mechanisms that we learned that may or, not, may, or may not be helpful. And the third question I want you to ask is where am I telling myself I'm supposed to be as it relates to productivity, right? Are you telling yourself that you're supposed to be in this place where, you know, you just get all the things done? Are you telling yourself that you're supposed to be in a place where you're getting the work of two done? Where are you telling yourself that you're supposed to be as it relates to productivity? And what if you're wrong about that? How much different might you feel if you allowed yourself to be wrong about where you're telling yourself you're supposed to be, right? One of the things that I find so powerful about coaching is that it gives us an opportunity to explore things like this without judgment. And when we explore questions like this without judgment and we see what's going on inside of us, that's when we can figure out where the patterns are that are holding us back, that are making things harder than they need to be. Because grief is already hard enough. We don't need to make it harder. Life is already hard enough, right? Humaning. I think I just made that word up. It's hard. It's hard to be a human. And there's a lot of patterns that exist in our brain that are making it harder. And I know that if you're listening to this podcast, you really do want to love your life again. You do not want grief to be the thing that defines you or limits you. You are not done living. And so questions like this can help because then we can look at what's going on inside of us. And if we're talking to ourselves in mean ways, if we have stories that are moving us away from what we want, we can change those. We can absolutely change them. So give it some serious thought. What have you been making productivity mean? You are not alone. I don't know really anyone who has escaped this narrative. It is so pervasive in our culture. So don't beat yourself up about it. Just notice it. Remind yourself that it's optional. All right? And go get registered for happier holidays. Coachingwithkrista.com forward slash free holiday event. And I will see you there.
That's what I have for you this week. Remember, I love you. You've got this. Take care and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. If you like what you've been hearing on this podcast and want to create a future you can truly get excited about even after the loss of your spouse, I invite you to join my Mom Goes On coaching program. It's small group coaching just for widowed moms like you where I'll help you figure out what's holding you back and give you the tools and support you need so you can move forward with confidence. Please don't settle for a new normal that's less than what you deserve. Go to coachingwithkrista.com and click work with me for details and next steps. I can't wait to meet you.